All right, thanks everybody a ton for coming. I know there was a lot of trouble getting in the doors, uh, so appreciate everyone uh, being here today. We're gonna talk about advancing security analytics with Snowflake and AWS at Sneak. I'm Seth Rosen. I'm a product director in our data products group responsible for all of our customer facing reporting. Uh, today we're going to talk about the story of how we built this. This is our new uh, customer facing reporting product inside our Sneak application. We're going to talk about the story behind uh, why we built it and how we built it using Snowflake. Um, so really excited to get started. So first, we're gonna talk a little bit about Sneak, uh, who we are, what we do, uh, but most importantly, we're gonna talk about uh, why data is so important to our customers. Uh, because, of, because of what Sneak is, uh, data becomes critical to empowering our customers to do what they have to do. We'll talk about five key challenges that we faced when we started this project, and then we'll walk through each one of them and talk about how we solved them. We'll summarize a little bit with uh, why we chose Snowflake uh, and then talk about what's coming next in the future. So before we start uh, and get into, uh, into the, the main, main portion of this, I wanted to talk a little bit about Sneak uh, and what we do. Sneak helps uh, enterprises and organizations secure their application. Uh, so if you think about modern applications today, uh, about 20% of it is actually proprietary code that custom companies are trying to build and release as fast as possible. Uh, Sneak helps companies uh, build and release their software as fast as possible while still slaying, staying secure. Beneath that is open source dependencies, and actually about 80% of an application's code base comes from open source dependencies. These applications run in containers, they're deployed through infrastructure as code, and they run inside your cloud environment on AWS, and Sneak helps you secure all of these different areas. We're able to look at your code, we're able to look at your infrastructure that's now running in AWS with our new cloud product, and we're able to actually identify where in your infrastructure you have vulnerabilities and tie that back to your infrastructure's code file. So going from code to cloud and back to code. One of the things that is unique about Sneak and that we've done really well is we've really empowered developers to secure their own applications. So we've shifted a lot of the security burden that might have sat with security teams and moved that to developers by empowering them with best-in-class tooling. This is what some people refer to as the shift left of security, uh, and Sneak does that really well. But shifting left is not enough. We need to also enable security teams to work with development teams to have data-informed conversations about how they're doing with their own security posture, where they need to do a better job fixing and remediating issues. Um, this process oftentimes is broken, bridging the gap between software teams and development teams, and that's where data comes in, and data plays an important role in closing this loop. We heard from our enterprise customers that we had great best-in-class developer tooling, but they needed better visibility, observability, and analytics on how their customers, how their development teams were using Sneak, and better insight into how to prioritize and, and govern their security programs. This is one view in, uh, of Sneak's platform. As I mentioned, we have five different products, Sneak Code, Sneak Open Source, Sneak Container, Sneak IAC, and Sneak Cloud, but they all come together in one platform. They're not five distinct products that we sell. They come together in one developer experience in one platform, and a lot of that was part of the, cha the data challenge that we had. We had to make sure that all of these products came together into a single data model, uh, into a single pane of glass for our customers so they could look across all of Sneak across all of our products and have a view um, of a full view of the world. Stepping back just a little bit about when I started at, at Sneak uh, in our journey, uh, came over in the top code acquisition. Sneak acquired top code in 2002, uh, in March of 2002. Top code's a low code uh, data visualization and query engine. It allows us to rapidly build new visualizations and new reports. It's SQL-based, it's inspired by DBT. Just out of curiosity, are there any people familiar with DBT in the audience? We'll talk a little bit about uh, how we use it 
and what it is is supposed to be lowercase, uh, not uppercase. The DBT mafia is going to come, come after me. Uh, and we built Topcode on AWS. And the whole premise was that we can now build true production applications on top of a data warehouse. Um, and I, I apologize for putting in screenshots of tweets. I probably could have uh, done the whole presentation just on screenshots of tweets. Um, I only put in a few of them. But, but one thing that's been a personal passion of mine is this idea that we can now build really pr high production grade applications on top of a data warehouse. And that's really exciting. And that's what we did uh, in this instance. You know, one of the things that this enables is it allows data professionals, data analysts, data engineers to participate in building these applications alongside software engineers. And on top of Snowflake, we really can do that. We can collaborate. Data analysts and data scientists and data engineers can actually take part in the product development lifecycle while also collaborating with software engineering. So we're going to walk through our five problems, and then we'll talk about each one uh, and how we addressed it. The first we talked a little bit about is customers loved our sneak product, uh, but they needed better reporting and monitoring for governance. Uh, the, we heard this loud and clear from some of our biggest customers. The bigger you are as a customer of sneak, the more applications you have, the more developers you have using sneak, the more important data becomes to actually implementing um, this, your security program. Our legacy reporting product that we had, and we did have legacy reporting in our product, uh, it was slow uh, and had a really long data lag. I think we all might be familiar with for internal analytics, you know, having an overnight ETL window where the data is ETL'd into a reporting database might be fine for internal analytics or, or internal BI dashboards. It wasn't good enough for our customers uh, to have this kind of lag in their data. Um, so we had to solve this. It's particularly important, you know, if there's a zero-day vulnerability. A zero-day vulnerability uh, is when uh, a, new, a new vulnerability is first disclosed and customers need to go in and be able to see, am I exposed to this? Where in my application do I have this vulnerability? And now I need to fix it. Having any kind of lag like nine hours significantly reduces their trust in us, getting them the data that they need. So we had to, we had to solve this. Our legacy reporting was also incredibly slow. Uh, we had uh, large customers going in to load our reports, and they would just see these spinners. And they'd see these spinners over and over again, and the reports wouldn't load. We've probably all been there where we're looking at a dashboard. It's spinning, and we get distracted. We do something else. We go on Twitter. Might just, might just be me, but, but get, get sucked in. Uh, we, ha we had to fix this. We needed to have a really high-performing uh, reporting interface. The other thing which was somewhat of a unique requirement is we needed to ensure that we could have our reporting infrastructure and uh, the, re the new reporting product that we were building deployed everywhere that Sneak was deployed. Uh, Sneak is available in our multi-tenant US environment, our multi-tenant EU environment, our recently announced multi-tenant Australia environment. We have private cloud single tenant customers. We needed to make sure that we could deploy our full stack in, in all those environments. And this was a somewhat of a unique requirement. I think if you think about the traditional modern data stack that's out there, you often have companies stitching together different SaaS tools, uh, and it ends up being kind of a, a SaaS-based um, you know, solution that doesn't need to be deployed anywhere. But, but not for us. We, it was a production application that had to be deployed everywhere our application was de de deployed. And that presented some unique challenges where, where Snowflake, in particular, really excelled. And then lastly, our legacy reporting product was inflexible, and it made it really hard to explore data. And I think one of the things that um, is true about data is when you give customers something, they always want more of it. And there's a, general, uh, there's a general feeling of data consumers that the data that they want should be available, and it should be there. And so we really wanted to make sure that the product we were building allowed our customers to slice and dice and pull the data they expected to be there. Now, we're still working on this. We're still getting better at building this exploratory experience. But we wanted to make sure that it was really easy for customers to get at the data they wanted um, so they weren't frustrated that there were certain things they just couldn't get to or certain ways they just couldn't slice and dice the data. Again, another personal, um, personal uh, issue that's been uh, true in my entire data career. So we ended up with these five requirements coming out of our, our, our problems. Uh, we needed a unified uh, experience across all our products. 
We needed a low latency data pipeline. We needed uh, responsive and fast dashboard load times. We needed to be available anywhere Sneak was deploy deployed, and we needed this, this flexible and exploratory analytics experience. So we'll talk about each one of these. So this is a picture of our, our stack. You can see in the main box, we have Snowflake, DBT, and Topcoat. Snowflake is our cloud data warehouse where we uh, put all of our data available for reporting. We use DBT for data transformations to build out our reporting data marts, and we use Topcoat to build out our visualizations. But the most important thing on this slide is everything that's happening on the left. As I mentioned, one of the main challenges we had is we needed to have all of our Sneak products come together in a single data model. Uh, and if you are coming at this from a pure data engineering perspective, you might make the decision to use you know, your ELT approach, your extract, load, and transform, which is kind of the newest, the newest practice uh, within data, where you take all your data out of your systems, you load it into your warehouse, and you transform it. Uh, and it, we didn't take that approach. Uh, we didn't feel like that was gonna provide real-time data uh, as fast as we needed it. Uh, it would mean that the, 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 the producers of this data weren't actually responsible for its ultim ultimate shape. And so we made the organizational decision to actually make the producers of this data conform to a common schema. So an example of that is an issue. An issue at Sneak is what we're finding when we scan your application, when we scan your code base, when we scan your infrastructure's code, when, you, when we scan your cloud environment, we generate an issue. And we needed to make sure that all of our products came together and treated an issue the same way. And that schema that was generated with an issue, as an example, is now a data contract. And that data contract must conform to that shape. And now we can take that data and we can stream it into our warehouse. And this was a big decision. It's something we're still working on. We're still trying to get better at this. Uh, we released our first iteration of this, but we're continuing to get better at making sure that the producers of this data conform to the right schema so that we can write tests against it. We'll talk a little bit about that as well. But this is actually, in many ways, a shift left in data the same way we shift left in security. We're shifting left and making sure that the producers of this data are conforming to this schema. So one big, big design decision we made, which really did enable this, this real-time streaming use case. But there are still instances where our products do differ. They have different dimensional data. One example is uh, an open source has a dependency and a version, whereas you might not have that with your proprietary code base. You don't have that. Uh, and so we, need to need, we did need to ingest that data differently and then model it you know, using dimensional modeling differently. So we're doing a little bit of both, but the, but the key thing here was ensuring that you know, we're pushing uh, upstream to ensure that there's a common model so that we truly can get to a real-time world where we trust the data that's being ingested. The next thing we had to solve was this low latency data pipeline. So this might be, might be a little tough to read, but I'll explain what's happening. Uh, so we're starting with our operational systems that are generating, again, using the issue as an example, are generating issues. We're actually using Debezium, which generates events. We're then streaming the data into Snowflake using Kafka. Uh, from there, we're using a combination of Snowflake streams and tasks to do two things. The first thing we're doing is we're generating a history table. So for example, with an issue, we're able to now generate a full table of what's happening to that issue, and we can look at its life cycle. So we see that an issue was first identified. Maybe we see that something about that issue, maybe a score was updated with that issue. So we, we put another row in our table. Now maybe that issue is closed, and now we can say that that issue is closed in our history table. So we have this full, full event uh, history for every entity that we're streaming into our warehouse. And that's happening in near real time, right? Seconds to minutes, that's happening. Uh, and it's getting faster with, with lots of improvements on both our side and on Snowflake's side. And then we're taking that same history table and we're squashing it down to get the current state of issues. So we're first you know, blowing it out and getting the full, the full history, and then we're squashing it back down to get the current state. And now we have two different tables that we're able to report on in near real time. And we can make the decision, are we going to go to these tables or are we going to go to our data mart? And so our data mart's in the, in the top the top right corner of this, and that's built using DBT. So we take these tables that are coming over in real time, and now we write a series of transformations to be able to build a data mart that's gonna serve the purposes of our customers. And we'll talk a lot about, a lot about those use cases 
uh, coming up. But now this part is batched. So now we're doing this periodically, you know, every 30 minutes. Uh, we're roughly around, you know, under an hour of data latency for certain use cases. And so we're able to make the decision when we write a query, are we going to go at some of these real-time tables, or are we going to use our modeled data that's transformed using dbt in our warehouse? So we have both, we have both options within Snowflake, both the real-time and the tables that are built using dbt. The other thing that, that is worth talking about is data quality uh, and data, data correctness. Uh, it really could have been a sixth requirement. We're talking about the five that we have here today. But data quality kind of goes without saying. And so one of the unique ways we use dbt is once we load the data into Snowflake, we're able to write all sorts of tests on top of it. Testing in software is obviously commonplace. Testing of the actual data is less so. But we leverage it heavily. So we do a couple of different kinds of testing. We do automated testing to ensure that the data coming in, right, this data contract that's coming in matches our expectations. If for some reason an operational system stops generating data, you know, we'll detect it. Hey, we're not seeing data. If it's generating something that violates our data contract, we'll be able to, to correct it. Um, when we write transformations, we also have tests to ensure that we're not breaking any kind of uh, referential integrity or that we're, you know, creating duplication with some kind of join we're writing these tests to ensure that our data quality is being maintained both in the data ingestion and any transformations that we're doing. The last thing that we want is for our customer to say, hey, this data doesn't seem like it's coming in or this data seems wrong. We want to know it first and we want to build it into our entire workflow, whether we're um, you know, adding new tables and ingesting new types of data, whether we're writing new transformations, whether we're editing an existing transformation. Uh, we want to be the ones to know with our tests so that we, one, never makes it to production, or if it's there in production and we notice it, we can fix it before any customers uh, find out. So, so heavily leveraging data testing. One of the exciting things with Snowflake and the ecosystem around Snowflake is there's tons of observability tools and data tools, uh, testing tools, uh, that we're also exploring. And so there's a whole ecosystem of tools really helping customers like us be able to write these tests and identify areas where um, there might be uh, poor data quality. So again, to summarize, we're, we're streaming data into Snowflake. Uh, we're also using dbt uh, to further transform our data into a shape that makes sense for our reporting use cases. The next requirement was really around fast response. Like when that customer goes to that page that you saw on the first slide, when they load that dashboard, when they load that report, we want it to be fast. We want them to be able to come to the sneak application and get the data they want quickly. We don't want to have spinners. We want things to be fast. Uh, so the first thing that we found out is that our customers' data comes in all different shapes and sizes. They're using um, different products that we have at Sneak. They're using different integrations we have, our various um, you know, source code management tools. They're using Sneak in different ways. Some of them are leveraging our groups and orgs features to, to group their applications and their users differently. Some of them are using our features related to tags that allow them to provide user-generated metadata on top of Sneak data. There's all these different ways that our customers are using Sneak. Some of them are large, some of them are small. And we needed to make sure that we had really good sample data to test with so that we could really know that when this thing gets to production, it's going to have um, you know, the responsiveness and the speed that we wanted. And this, this was a really hard problem because generating sample data, it's not always easy. We did the best we could to do it. Um, we also had a really tight closed beta when we first launched. We started this project around you know, March or April timeframe, uh, and we were able to get into a closed beta in the August timeframe and really get a subset of customers and do the same thing where we looked at customers who were using Sneak in different ways and had all different shapes and size data get in there early so that we could really optimize these queries. The main thing that we were looking to solve for was how we cluster data in Snowflake, right? St clustering is how you actually are storing data on the disk. And what we were trying to do is actually minimize the number of micro partitions that are scanned in any given query. Um, and so we're really looking at this. We're looking at how our customers are using the data, how much data is actually being scanned to really optimize and get performance uh, performance level. This is one place where the team at Snowflake partnered closely with us to really give us best practices, uh, to help us 
really optimize these. And this is, this is an ongoing effort. We're continuing to look at the metrics related to performance. Um, we're logging them, we're monitoring them so that we can continue to make different design decisions about how we're leveraging our data model to improve performance. We also decided that we needed to pre-aggregate things where necessary. Uh, we wanted everything to be you know, fully slice and diceable. We wanted everything to be near real time, but there were certain things that we made the trade-off decision to pre-aggregate. You know, one example is a metrics like a mean time to resolve. Mean time to resolve looks at how long does it take on average from when Sneak first identified an issue to when you fixed it, how long does that generally take? And a customer might want to look at this for critical issues in production applications, how long is it taking to fix? This is something that if you're looking at a 12-week time period and you're looking at it by week, it doesn't really matter. That last hour probably doesn't matter. And so there are certain things that there's opportunities for pre-aggregation. And so we use that as necessary. And it's again, it's another lever that we can pull. We can, there's trade-offs that go along with it but we can decide, okay, when are we gonna look at things in, in total real time or near real time or under an hour or later by pre-aggregating. And all of this, like I said, we're, we're testing and we're optimizing it continuously. We're not, we're not nearly done, we'll never be done. As we add new reports, it's just something that's now part of, our, um, part of our team that we're constantly looking at this performance and looking for areas where we can continuously improve it. Uh, the, next, the next requirement um, was, was interesting, right? We said that we had to be available anywhere Sneak was deployed. And I mentioned our different deployment regions that we have. So we have our multi-tenant US environment. Uh, we have our multi-tenant EU environment. We just announced our uh, environment coming in Australia. We also have clients who choose to be in a single tenant private cloud environment on AWS. And so we needed to be sure that we could deploy our entire stack in all these different environments. And so uh, we did everything in infrastructure as code. From the very beginning, and this is one place where Snowflake really excelled and enabled us, and one of the main reasons we, we, we chose to go with Snowflake as well, is we're able to deploy this and satisfy any type of data residency requirements, customer requ requirements, compliance requirements, we can, we can deploy Snowflake as a production application and all the different data centers where we need to be, and we can do it all as infrastructure, as code. And our team was diligent about ensuring that any configuration change we made, any, any decision we made was done in code from the beginning. Uh, and that has really helped us. It's helped us automate these deployments and be able to ship this everywhere. Um, and so using, using infrastructure as code was, was critical for us, and we're able to ship our entire stack, not just the Snowflake portion, but everything else on AWS um, using, using that method. So um, I, told, I told people on Twitter that the best pun that they came up with would make it into my, my AWS talk. They, they weren't the best puns, but this one's, this one's relevant. All the, pun, all the good puns were trapped in and the private cloud, um, so that's why the, there's none here today. Um, so put everything in, in infrastructure as code. The next requirement was all about building a flexible and exploratory analytics experience. And in order to do this, it wasn't just, hey, here's all the data, go slice and dice. We really had to think about what are the use cases that our customers want. We spent a lot of time talking to our customers, talking to our sales team, our teams in the field. We have a huge database of customer requests and things that have come in that we went through to try to identify what is it in our data that our customers really want to get to? Who are the personas of these customers and what do they want? And there's a bunch of different buckets, but the first three that we started with was prioritization. Our customers could have thousands, hundreds of thousands, or even millions of issues that are being generated by Sneak and they need a quick way to be able to slice and dice and whittle that list down into things that they care about. So it could be things that are uh, critical vulnerabilities in production systems where Sneak has an auto fix available, where we can just go and create a pull request automatically to fix your vulnerability. That's a, an easy example of using reporting to take millions of issues and whittle them down to stuff that can be fixed really quickly. To be able to manage and audit, right? establish trends in baseline performance as Sneak is rolled out to um, 
to an organization, some development teams might be doing better or worse than other teams in terms of fixing vulnerabilities. You might have some teams that fix critical vulnerabilities right away and some teams that ignore them, right? And so to be able to manage and audit and govern and pull that data to be able to administer a security program was critical. Uh, and then value confirmation. Our customers want to know that they're using Sneak appropriately, that they can see everything in a single plane of glass, and that they can understand, okay, what has Sneak actually helped me resolve? And so doing all of these um, with, with our first reporting product is what we, were trying, what we were trying to accomplish. And the only way we were gonna do this is by building this exploratory, flexible experience that allowed our customers to kind of configure things and drill down and, and you know, pivot and do different things that they would not be able to do otherwise to be able to get to their specific use cases because there's a really long tail of use cases. So we partner really closely with our user experience team. Uh, I think, generally speaking, uh, design is a missing role in analytics and in data visualization. Uh, we put a lot of time and effort into wireframing and building mockups and prototypes and showing them to customers. We used our closed beta period to validate a lot of these assumptions. We were trying to build an experience that was both flexible and purpose-built, right? So they gave the customer the knobs to see what they wanted, but also was built for those use cases that we saw on the previous slide. So all the reports that we release, you can navigate between them. Uh, you can drill down. You can add and modify columns. You can filter. Uh, but they all interact and they're all purpose-built for the specific use cases that we'd identified. Uh, and then if that's not good enough for customers, we're using Snowflake's uh, CSV service to let customers pull it in Excel uh, and then they can do anything they want. And you know, no matter what, customers are going to want things in Excel. And so that's a capability we're using to let them quickly pull things down uh, and use Excel as well. And so really there's kind of an infinite possibility about what our customers can do with this data. So flexible and exploratory experience. We work closely with our design team uh, and really focused on design and UX, which is often, often a missing link within data, but we spent a lot of time with it. So we hit all five of these. We were able to unify our products across everything by shifting left. Uh, we used Kafka to stream data into Snowflake streams and tasks to build these, these key reporting tables. Uh, we really worked uh, together with Snowflake using best practices to uh, cluster data appropriately to reduce micro partitions. Uh, we made sure we did everything using infrastructure as code to deploy our entire stack everywhere. Uh, and we built this exploratory experience that our customers could get exactly the data that they needed. Um, so so this, was, this was all of this led us to choosing Snowflake. We laid out these requirements um, but the other main benefit is we're able to use the data tools that we know and love. And this was, this was a big part of our decision to go with Snowflake is in many ways we were, um, in many ways we were solving software engineering problems, but even more so we were solving data problems, right? It's, it's about uh, building measures, building dimensions, uh, being able to uh, build new visualizations quickly, build new transformations. And we're able to not just have software engineers work on these problems. Our software engineering team is working heavily on this. But we also are able to empower our data team to come in and build new reports and build new analytics. And that goes a really long way for the future of the reporting we're going to build. We now have this platform that allows us to build new visualizations quickly, build new reports fast, because we're using a best-in-class uh, data platform, not just tools um, not just kind of generic software engineering tools. And so we really wanted to stay focused on, on providing data tools. And then the other one is the ecosystem and extensibility. So we'll talk a little bit about that um, right now. So what, what's, what's coming next? So I showed this slide earlier. This is our platform at Sneak. We have these products coming together into one platform. One of the key pillars of our platform is extensibility. So at Sneak, we have tons of APIs. We let people build all types of integrations and custom workflows using our APIs. We wanted to make sure that our data stack was just as extensible and allowed just the same amount of customization. Uh, and so that was another reason that we went with Sneak. Uh, we went with Snowflake. So if you look at this particular diagram again, this is the same one I showed before. 
This is our reporting stack. We use Snowflake and DBT, and we want to be able to turn these over to our customers and let them build on top of Snowflake and build new things with Sneak Data. And that's one of the unique opportunities we have with Snowflake. So one example of that is Snowflake data sharing. Would allow all the work that we've already done putting data in Snowflake and transforming it for these use cases, but now let our customers actually access that data in their own Snowflake environments and build their own experiences, enrich it with other, other data they might have, build their own rules on top of our data. There's so many opportunities uh, to be able to uh, integrate with Snowflake and let our customers integrate as well.